On this week's show, Laurentians reflect on liberty and justice at Community Day. The Alliance of Black Cultures kicks off Black History Month. We profile musician and singer-songwriter Zoe Tierfelder and hit the slopes with the ski club in Vermont. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Aiden Duffy. Lawrenceville's annual winter gathering was held on February 3rd and 4th. Parents immersed themselves in the Lawrenceville experience over the weekend by attending their children's classes, becoming students themselves in master classes, lunching in their students' house, participating in college counseling seminars, and rooting for Big Red at athletic events. Congratulations to fifth formers Alexander Liu, Brett Peskin, and Riley Corin, who were nominated for the United States Presidential Scholars Program. The Presidential Scholars Program recognizes high school seniors for outstanding achievement in the academic, arts, and technical education. On Wednesday, fifth formers Jordan Blassingame, Dylan DeMarco, and Nico Sachi signed NCAA National Letters of Intent to continue their career as student athletes. Blassingame and DeMarco will play football at Stonehill College and Bucknell, respectively, while Sachi will play women's lacrosse for the Washington and Lee Generals. Former National Hockey League player Bobby Sanghetti, Lawrenceville class of 2006, will represent the United States at the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. Selected as a member of the U.S. Olympics men's ice hockey team, Sanghetti was a member of Big Red Boys Varsity Ice Hockey. Sanghetti joins another Lawrenceville Winter Olympian, Jenny Knowles, class of 2019, who is a goalie for the Joint Korean Women's Ice Hockey Team. On February 1st, the Lawrenceville community paused to consider the American dream during Community Day activities. Listening to speakers and participating in workshops, students were eager to stretch their understanding. We fanned out across campus to bring you this report. Hi, my name is Tiffany Thomas and today I'm here at the KAC for our annual Community Day. We just heard from Sonia Nazario, who is an amazing author who currently writes for the Los Angeles Times. She's best known for her Pulitzer Prize for her book, Enrique's Journey. So everyone right now is leaving the KAC and heading to their workshops. And so here we begin Community Day 2018. Out of the 46 workshops offered at this year's Community Day, we got to visit three of them. People are less likely to get enough sleep. So children who use a media device right before they go to sleep are more likely to sleep less than they should, more likely to sleep poorly, and more than twice as likely to be sleepy during the day. Uh, this whole uh, session was pretty cool because we learned about like nomophobia and how much like people use smartphones. We did like a, a quiz where um, we were asked like whether you'd be nervous or like annoyed if we didn't have our smartphone or like different situations like how connected we are to our smartphone. In this cell, prisoners are confined for 23 hours a day. The light is on all the time. Uh, the noise is constant. Uh, many of the uh, incarcerated uh, prisoners are mentally ill. The constant, just the noise and all, everything about this. I mean, I could see how it can have various negative effects on people and wouldn't want to experience it myself. I can only imagine how it would be to live it every day. Just had a nice informational session on baseball and the American dream. What do you think about it? Um, I thought it was really insightful. Uh, you guys talked a lot about the international aspect of baseball, and then through that we were able to see players from all around the world uh, who have really made an impact on baseball, whether it's from the, the marketing or the economical aspect or just the, the demographical aspect of it and the diversity they bring to the game. I, I was really um, impressed by that. As Black History Month kicks off around the world, senior features correspondent Jeremy Huang gathered members of the Alliance of Black Cultures to discuss the importance of community. So what does ABC seek to do on Lawrenceville's campus? Um, I think our goals are to unify the black community, also to educate the broader community on black issues and black culture. So let's talk about you guys specifically. So individually, why did you guys choose to take part of ABC? Well, for me, my middle school was practically all black. And when I got here, it was pretty much like a culture shock and in ABC I found a family that I could go to when I experienced negative things um, around campus like a place where I can't where I could 
like just talk and chill with people who knew where I was coming from. Yeah, especially coming in as a freshman, I think it's really hard because you're just meeting everyone and you're just trying to like still remember your background at the same time, kind of seek and like find new friendships. So I feel like, at least for me, when I first joined ABC, it was kind of just like a more like a closer knit family where it's like students of like Laurentian students, but it's also people who understand my background, understand where I'm coming from and can help me out with different issues that some people on campus wouldn't be able to help me with. Coming to Lawrenceville was not as much of a culture shock for me, uh, given that I was in, I grew up in a predominantly white area, but uh, at Lawrenceville, I really felt the need to connect to the black community more and ABC provided that community for me. Hmm. Uh, I think also I went to a predominantly white middle school, but coming here, it was a shock to me just because there was no ABC at my old school. There was no club where everyone could come together and kind of talk about what was happening in their lives or no like, uh, family in that sense. And so having ABC be that family definitely encouraged me to not only be a part of it, but join council so that I could help lead it in a better direction. So, uh, so what are ABC's plans for the future this year? Uh, we plan to have uh, the CSA, um, some of their students come in and do a performance for the school. We plan to uh, continue that program throughout the rest of the year. We plan to have various outings for the group. Uh, we plan to uh, m probably make a trip to the movies or uh, have some form of uh, restaurant outing. We just want to continue having um, moments that people could cherish and people um, can continuously make connections because that's ultimately what holds ABC together is are the club members within ABC. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeremy. Fourth former musician and singer-songwriter Zoe Tierfelder is a fixture on Lawrenceville stages. We caught up with her and heard some of her new work. Hi, I'm Zoe Tierfelder. I'm a musician and actor. In terms of music, I play the ukulele, guitar, piano, and I sing. I started taking piano lessons in second grade and have taken them on and off since then. Um, I sing in Laurentian's Rouge and separately in my voice lessons and am self-taught for both the ukulele and the guitar. For theater, I started acting in fourth grade in my fourth grade operetta at my lower school. Um, and was involved in various productions throughout middle school and I'm now in the musical and currently am in a Winterfest show. Mr. Palmer has definitely been a big presence in my life at, in terms of me as a singer and I love the songs he picks for us and how he pushes us to be the best that we can be both individually and as a choir. I started songwriting last May some of the first songs I started writing for were for the guitar, and then I started writing for the piano as well. I've also written a few for the ukulele. Um, I always wanted to write music ever since I was younger and really struggled with it. And then in May, I wrote a song for my mom for Mother's Day, and then sort of forced myself to start writing after that. Um, and it's really developed into a real passion of mine. I love it. I write songs as much as I can. A lot of mine aren't based about real fact or real experiences of mine. A lot of them, I sort of come at them like a fiction writer writing a story just instead of a book. It's in song. And finally tonight, we head to Killington, Vermont, where ski club members enjoy a perfect long weekend on the slopes. Thanks, Aiden. We're on our way to Killington Mountain for the Lawrenceville Ski Club's annual winter gathering trip. What are you looking forward to today? It was a little icy yesterday. The conditions weren't very good. But today I hope that the fresh layer of the snow would cover that up, make it better. Students waking up early to get that first lift. Um, teachers are excited. Alrighty, let's head off to the shuttle. When we signed up two weeks ago, we were unsure about the weather. But it's supposed to snow now through tomorrow morning and we'll have clear skies beyond that. Everyone's excited and ready to hit the slopes. I'm here with Bill from the Killington Ski Patrol. So Bill, how have the conditions been out here? Uh, conditions here are all time today, man. Everything's powders deep, everything's steep. Go get it. So how many days have, have been like this this year? We've had a few power days this year, but this is one of the best ones we've had so far. 
So guys, how have, the, how have the conditions and how's the ski trip been so far? Um, yeah, the conditions have been really good and for those of us who haven't had much experience with this kind of powder, it's been a great experience all around. So what's been the highlight of the trip so far? Um, well, we had a powder day yesterday, so that's definitely been great. What are you guys doing to uh, relax and rest after a long day of skiing? So we're also sore, so what we're doing is just relaxing, playing cards together, making dinner together, we're eating lasagna for dinner, and watching the Super Bowl together. And I'm hoping that Mr. Hughes, I don't have to seem grumpy because he's a huge Patriots fan. With three days of ideal condition, this Killingster trip has certainly been a success. From the Beast of the East, I'm Matthew McChesney. Thank you, Matthew. That is our broadcast for this Friday night, February 9th, 2018. From all of us here at L10, thank you for watching and have a good night.